welcome back. It's been a little bit since we've done an update at the Stevens house. Lots have been going on, but a lot of kind of framing, rough in stuff. But let me take you through the house and I'll give you a little sneak peek of what's been happening here. One of the biggest changes is in the kitchen. So I want you to notice this big opening that we opened up between the dining room, the formal dining room and the kitchen. Look at how big this is gonna be. We just finalized our cabinet plan. So there's gonna be cabinets along the three walls and a huge nine foot island right here in the center. We did finalize the changes to the powder room bathroom. So if you remember, this was just kind of a big, one big parlor, old parlor. This is gonna be the powder room bathroom and then a little hall closet. If you remember, we were gonna put the hall closet here and the door here, but that would, that would require changing up all of this original trim down here and we didn't wanna disrupt it. Also, you have things like thermostats and other wiring that comes through this wall. So I thought it was a better idea to put the door right here. So you're gonna have a little coat closet and then an additional closet here, which ultimately this will be a den. Isn't this gonna be a great little room right off of the living room? It's gonna be perfect. Everybody working from home, they need a den. If you remember this built-in that we salvaged from the wall that we took down between the, the um, dining room and the kitchen, this cool old piece, we're gonna put it on this wall in the, what's gonna be the den, and this is all framed out. So now you can kind of picture where it's gonna go, but it's, gonna, it's the perfect size to fit right here. So when the den is all done, you're gonna see that built-in, it's gonna be all finished off sitting right here. Reusing the pieces of the house that were really special, because you, you don't want them to go away. You just wanna reintegrate them in places that make more sense. Everybody loves a laundry room where all the bedrooms are. And the most obvious place was to put it where this used to be a closet. So the closet used to come to just where the hardwood floor ends. So we framed it out because you gotta have the depth for washer and dryer, but this is the perfect spot. This is what the walls look like after we took off all that old wallpaper. So you're gonna see old, what they call this lath and plaster. So it looks like this. This is the lath and this is the plaster. But when it gets old, it'll start to crack like this because it basically starts to move away from the old lath. It just comes away, like almost like the glue just kind of comes away. And then it'll just, when, once it goes, it's almost just like peeling an onion. That whole layer will just start to pop off. So how do you fix it? Basically, you have to go all the way to the corner, remove all the plaster on this one wall, then sheetrock it. Then you can kind of blend it into the old lath and plaster. Old lath and plaster is fine to keep, but once it starts cracking like that, it just starts to go. So why lath and plaster in these old houses? Well, they didn't have drywall back then. So that was the method. The old lath strips they would put on first, and then they would plaster all over it. And again, sometimes that plaster would go through the, the faces between the lath and it would kind of help hold it on. But then that, that backside starts to crumble away. Then it all starts to fall off. So we're thankful for these days where we have the light drywall and we don't have to do this stuff anymore. This is the secondary bath on the second floor. And right now all you see is just some framing. Um, the tub used to be there. There was a little toilet room, little potty room, but it was so small that we opened that back up. We just kind of rearranged things and uh, this is what it looks like vacant. I would say the biggest change since our last update was in the master bedroom and bathroom. So we've been working a lot with the contractors and the subs to re kind of redo this space. Because if you remember, the master bedroom was so big it was almost too big, like too big for just a bed and some nightstands. So we reutilized the space that we had and we reoriented the whole master bathroom. What we did was we added, actually added a second closet right here off of this main entry here. So 
We're not going to call that his closet, but we could. <laughs> then we added a huge walk-in closet. Check this out. This is all going to be walk-in closet. And this is probably 20 feet by, I don't know, 8 to 10 feet. This place is gigormous, but we feel like it was the best use of space. Still leaves a huge amount of space for a huge king size bed, a couple nightstands, and then maybe I kind of picture like a little sitting area here because if you look out this window, you can actually see some water um, and you still have a huge space. One of the big challenges we had to solve, if you remember from one of our episodes, was this whole ceiling would start to cave in. There wasn't enough support. So look at all the framing that they had to do to support the weight of that attic. The master bathroom changes that we made this last week are going to be amazing. I'm so excited about this master bathroom. The original master bath entrance was in this weird little space here in, that, in this original master bedroom where you literally had to walk all the way towards that window, cut over, and then it stepped up a few steps because they elevated the floor to put all the plumbing for the bathtub and the vanities and everything. All that's gone. And we reoriented the space. So now you're going to walk in at the, around the middle of the room. This just makes sense. And you're going to step in. And this is going to be a huge shower. Huge shower. So that whole space, one big shower. And then you're going to turn this way. And we're going to have a freestanding oval tub. This is just amazing. And then double vanities over there. So it's going to feel very light and airy and lots of space and large spaces to just enjoy when you're in your bathroom. I think it's a misnomer that when you have plumbing that comes up through the floor that you have to keep your fixtures where they are. Maybe you're remodeling your bathroom and you really want to take some space and you want to reorient things. You can do that. The trick is you just have to go back down to where the plumbing came from. You have to move it. So you might have to open up a ceiling from, below, from down below, but that's not the end of the world. It's just drywall. A good quality contractor can open that space up, move the plumbing from down below to where you want it, and then close up whatever he opened up. Not a big deal. Part of the house that was never ever touched was the attic. And I know you're curious about what we're gonna do up there. It's gonna be the most amazing space, but you're gonna have to wait for the next episode. On the outside of the house, the guys are done painting all the trim. I mean, look at how beautiful that looks, that nice bright white. One thing I was worried about before was finding a lot of dry rot in this old trim, because the trim is, I mean, it'd be hard to replace that these days, but they found very, very little. So I just feel so blessed. All the pin tucking is done. What is pin tucking? Well, that's this area between the brick. And if you remember, we had all those spots where I could literally put my, my fingers through, but all of that is gone. See, they've gone through and filled all of it in. So brick is good to go. So that's the update. That's what's been going on. And you can't wait until we update you again. But one thing that you might be wondering is the blue roof. We'll update you next time.